What's up everybody, this is Air Creed Harry and today I'm here to share with you my basalt rebar order that I just picked up. So this is basalt rebar. This is a 8mm uh, basalt rebar. If you're not familiar with basalt rebar, it's uh, made from lava rock. And it's uh, made the similar process to fiberglass. If you've ever seen uh, fiberglass being processed the way it's made, they take glass and heat it up and um, they uh, I guess they hit it with compressed air and it actually comes out looking like a cotton candy if you ever look at fiberglass so this is made similar I guess where they melt the lava rock and they spin it into these bars and um, this is put together with resin so like fiberglass resin I'm not tight I'm not sure of the resin that's used but some kind of resin is what holds all the fibers together. And it turns out to be something like maybe three times stronger than steel and a lot, a way, way lighter than steel. I'm not sure of the comparison, the difference between the weights, but it's way lighter. And the other great benefit of basalt rebar, like these here I ordered, these are my elbows, 90 degree elbows. So you put two of these together and you make yourself a box and um, you use that it's this length because of overlapping you overlap and tie people who work with rebar know um, and um, the other great benefit of basalt rebar is uh, not only will it not rust so you can have a thinner concrete uh, around it usually with regular steel rebar you gotta have enough cement around it to prevent water from penetrating it and rusting it out but eventually that does happen. Water will penetrate the cement, get to the rebar of its steel, and begin rusting it, which will deteriorate your cement. And that's when your cement starts cracking and falling apart. So with basalt rebar, you don't have that issue. Especially if you're building a structure along the coastline where there's a lot of salt water and, um, and you have a lot of tendency of rusting. So really good benefit of that the other great thing is as you can see here the basalt rebar comes in a roll so you could get it in these spools here and this spool is 325 feet long uh, so when you uncoil it you'd have 325 foot long rebar and a big benefit of that especially for the dome is not only is this flexible to wrap around your air forms but uh, because of the length, you have a lot less overlapping. So in case you're not familiar with what I mean by overlapping, I'll demonstrate real quickly. Overlapping is what you do when you're building with rebar. And most construction sites require you have your rebar overlapping 24 inches. And then you'd have your ties at, at points to hold it. Right, so you couldn't just put rebar, you know, end to end. You wouldn't have your structure, your tensile strength. This has to be connected, so you would overlap your uh, your rebar. So now, in the case of basalt, when I do a ring around the dome as I'm making them, I'll only have one overlap because of the length, because this comes in 325 foot lengths. Normally, you might get like a 10 foot length of rebar with the steel and you'd have to connect all those sections together so you might have you know like four or five overlapping joints uh, which means you know you that overlap you're pretty much not using uh, 24 inches of rebar so by doing this by using the basalt you have a lot less overlapping which means you're using less material so I do believe the basalt is a little more expensive than steel, but for all of the properties you get for being able to work with it, I think it's uh, a lot more beneficial, especially for me. You can't build all jobs with basalt. There's a, you, know, you need your structural engineer to engineer your projects. But if you're looking to build a dome like myself, then this basalt rebar is really perfect type of rebar to use. And um, so anyway, I just wanted to share this with you all. 
This is the crate that I picked up uh, recently. And uh, I'll just show you real quick the inside. The crate is six and a half feet by six and a half feet by five feet tall. And this is all my rebar that came. My uh, 90 degree brackets, the L brackets. And um, there's enough rebar in here to do six 30 foot domes. And um, so anyway, this is uh, has just arrived. This is part of the supplies I was waiting for to build my dome. And, um, and your dome too. This, I'm not gonna be doing all of my domes soon. So that means I have supplies on hand to build your dome too if you're looking for a dome. As I mentioned in my last video, I have my cement pump here for pumping cement for shotcrete and also for pumping aircrete. So this is a professional pump. That's the motor for the pump. This is a shaker deck on top of my hopper. So I put my aggregates in here and it'll shake it up and fall in. And then here are my air forms. In case you didn't see my last video, I have all my air forms for building a 30 foot, a 32 foot, a 20, a 22 foot, and for building a hallway, nine feet wide, nine feet tall, up to 40 feet long. So the equipment's here. And uh, I have a small crew ready to build domes. So if you're looking to have a dome built using the method that I've described in the past with my videos, which is a structural concrete shell, which would be permittable, you would be able to get engineering plans and your county or whatever state you're in would allow you to build a safe structure using this method of structural concrete and rebar and having aircrete being used for your insulation that's my idea is to use aircrete for insulation so anyway that's it for now everybody peace out i love you all and i'll catch you later